So you might remember hearing about the analysis of variance or ANOVA in your intro stat course. In STAT 220, we usually will uh, think about ANOVA as a method for comparing more than two means. So maybe you have means mu1, mu2, mu3, and you want to know if they're different. And the way that we set up our null and alternative hypotheses, our null was always all the means are equal. So mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. And our alternative was at least 1 mu sub i is different. And then that was all you could conclude at the end of ANOVA was, you know, we have evidence to suggest that at least one of the means is different. We don't know which one. Um, and we're going to go deeper with ANOVA in this class. But the big thing that I want you to take away from uh, this class in ANOVA is that ANOVA and regression are the same thing. So let's think about this example where we're trying to predict someone's GPA based on the year uh, in college they are. So, um, oh my, uh, my years aren't in order here. Uh, so this is a categorical variable issue from R, but um, we've got first year, we've got sophomore, junior, and then senior. And we wanna know, are the average GPAs different between those groups? And the statistic that we would be comparing are the X bars. So we want to know is mu first year equal to mu sophomore equal to mu junior equal to mu senior, or is at least one of the means different. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use some uh, some statistics from our sample. And so we've got our X bar first year, we've got our X bar junior, we've got our X bar senior, and we've got our X bar sophomore. And we can see that they, they look different in the sample. Um, and what we're trying to ask with our inferential task is, are they really different uh, in the population? So looking at these means, um, they don't look super different to me. The one that, that really looks different is the junior, right? That looks a little bit higher than most of the rest of them. Um, but if I had to do a prediction for each of these groups, I would just use the mean because that's the only uh, information that I have other than GPA. So if you said, I'm a first year, uh, what do you think my GPA is? I would say, well, I predict it is 3.1 right? I'm a junior. What do you predict my GPA is? I think it's 3.25. I'm a senior. Oh, I predict it's uh, 3.2. And I'm a sophomore. Well, I also predict it's 3.2. So there's a variability in the GPAs. So here's the variability in first year GPAs. It could be as low as 2.0, could be as high as 4.0. Um, and we're interested in trying to um, capture some of that variability based on uh, the, the year in school that someone is. So this is what we've done in an intro stat course before. But if we wanted to, we could use the LM command to try to predict GPA based on this year. So that's what I've done here. I did, you know, LM of GPA by year and my data was a student survey. This is some data that comes with an intro stat textbook that I use. So you can see that call here in my um, regression output as well. And I don't think that we've seen a, a regression table like this so far in this class. So far, we've been doing simple linear regression and we've had our response variable uh, as quantitative and our explanatory variable, also quantitative. And now I want to do an, a simple example where our response variable is still quantitative, it's GPA, but our explanatory variable is categorical. And so this is the one where I've got uh, GPA is numeric and then year is categorical. 
So I've just fit it the same way that we would fit any other simple linear regression model, but I'm gonna get a bunch more stuff in my output table. So I get more lines uh, and more coefficients. And what you might notice looking at this table of coefficients is I have one that says year junior, and it's kind of all one word. I have one that says year senior, all one word, and year sophomore, all one word. But I don't have year first year anywhere. And that's because R, uh, by default, will pick one of the groups to use as the intercept. So the intercept is the one that is representing first year. Um, and if I wanted to uh, interpret these coefficients, I could say, you know, if the student was a first year, I would predict their GPA to be 3.08, let's round. So that's the way that we would interpret the intercept. And then um, when we're gonna interpret the, the other terms in our table, we're gonna have to do compared to the reference group. So in this case, compared to first years, Uh, we expect, or the model would predict, something like that, that juniors' GPAs are, on average, 0 0.16 points higher. And again, I'm rounding from this uh, 0 0.157. Uh, same thing with senior compared to first years. We'd expect seniors' GPAs to be 0.1 uh, points higher. Compared to first years, we'd expect sophomores' GPAs to be 0.1 point higher. Uh, so we're always making the comparison to the reference group. So we always, so we always compare to reference group. And essentially what that LM has done is it has picked each of these means um, and it said, that's what we're gonna use for the prediction. But in this class, we're gonna go further with ANOVA. It's not just gonna be checking to see if means are equal or one another. Uh, we're gonna be uh, thinking about ANOVA as a way of partitioning the variability. So depending on who you had as your professor in STAT 220, you may have seen these boxes before. And so what we're gonna call this is the total variation in uh, Y, which is our response variable. That's gonna be equal to the explained variability plus the unexplained variability. And we'll often represent this uh, variability in terms of sums of squares. So uh, we call the total variation of S, the SST, the total sum of squares. We call the explained variability, the SSM, the model sum of squares. And we call the unexplained variability, the SSE, or the error sum of squares. And we've got equations for each one of these, and they're all sums, and they're all gonna have squares because of the name that should hopefully be obvious. So I'm gonna write out the sum notation, and my sum is gonna go from i equal one to n. So for each of the um, number of points uh, that I have in my data set, I'm gonna have my yi minus y bar squared, uh, and that's gonna be equal to the sum i equal one to n of y i hat minus y bar squared plus the sum i equal one to n of the y i minus y i hat squared. I'm gonna copy these equations so that I can have them on my next page as well. Okay, so I'd like to draw you a diagram. And in this diagram, I'm gonna draw some points.
and I'm going to draw a regression line through these points. Let's say it looks like that. I'm going to call this y hat, my predicted values. And then I'm also going to draw a flat line through here. We'll call this y bar. And now I'd like to think about the pieces of that uh, variability that we're partitioning in terms of kind of residuals or differences on this plot. And I'll tell you that I'm doing this plot and um, a little bit of arithmetic um, or manipulation of symbols here, basically to give you some, uh, some intuition about the sums of squares. It's not actually going to be a proof, but it's hopefully going to convince you that these things do uh, add up. So I'm going to use um, blue to try to describe the total variability. So we've got our S, S, T. Um, and so what the, the total variability is, is the difference between an individual data point and the mean. So if I was thinking about um, this point right here, and I was going to do the difference between that point and the mean, I would just go straight up to the mean. Um, and the same thing for this point here. If I wanted to do the difference from the mean, there it is, and here, and here. So some of them are below the mean. I've also got some that are above the mean, and then they would drop down to that straight line. So that's my total variability uh, would be the y i minus y bar. Uh, and then this is going to be equal to some other pieces of variability. So I'm going to do the difference between the model and the mean in red. So that's my y i hat minus y bar. And so for each of those, uh, let's start um, maybe again with this point here. Uh, and then I'm going to draw the difference between the model and the mean for that point. So that's going to start at the model and it's going to go straight up to the mean. So that's the difference between those two things. Uh, same thing here, the model and the mean. Same thing here, the model and the mean, the model and the mean. Model and mean are the same for that point in, in the very middle. And then finally, in green, I'm going to do the yi minus yi hat. So those are the residuals, the difference between the, uh, the actual data point and the model prediction. So let's think about uh, this point again. Um, I'm going to put in the residual. So that's in between the data point and the model. Uh, and same thing for this point. I've got a very small residual, another small one. Um, for this point in the middle, the blue line and the green line are basically the same length because that red line doesn't exist. Uh, here, I'm going from the point to the line, the point to the line. So what I'd like you to see here is just that um, all in all of these cases, you can um, make a combination of those lines that will add up. So uh, either the blue is equal to the uh, the green plus the red, um, or sometimes you have a really long red, which is equal to the blue plus the green. Um, they they always work out because of the order of the subtraction. Um, and we could do a little bit of arithmetic. Uh, I'm going to erase some of my axis here so that I have some more room for my arithmetic. Um, I could uh, I could cancel some y i hats because I've got plus y i hat and minus y i hat. Uh, so then I'd have y i minus y bar is equal to negative y bar plus y i. Um, I could add y bar to both sides, and I've just got y i is equal to y i. Uh, so it should it should always work out that those things balance out, um, and that's what I've got the colors for. Uh, and I guess I could label down here. So we've got our S S M, and then this one's our S S E with the green. Again, that picture is just to build some intuition that these things add up. It's not actually a proof of anything.